Well, six current and former IRS agents testified from behind screens, their voices distorted to protect their identity. They said they're afraid of the IRS, too, calling it vindictive, arrogant, and merciless to taxpayers who owe money. We're told to go out there and collect in full in 30 days or shut them down. But are IRS abuses really any worse than they used to be? They've gotten much worse over the past yes, couple the years. Yes, problems are worse. Absolutely, it's much worse. I agree with my colleagues, much worse. I concur that it's much worse. Well, six current and former... Congress can be a weird place, but that has got to be one of the weirdest moments in Congress ever. Altered voices. That happened in September 1997 when the U.S. Senate held hearings into the IRS. The hearings were designed as a study in melodrama with the horror stories and the accusations and the altered voices and the screens. Those hearings back then were the work of uh, Senator William Roth, Republican of Delaware. The first round of Roth hearings were such a hit that he did them the next year as well in 1998. And that was the year that Godwin's Law just broke down and wept. One of our clients put a 357 Magnum to his head and blew his brains out just four days before his tax court case came to trial because he couldn't take the stress any longer. I'm one of the few taxpayers blessed with the resources to fight back against IRS abuse and Gestapo-like tactics. They accumulated this uh, Gestapo-like effort, such Gestapo-like uh, Actions are uncalled for. The people out in the field refer to the Criminal Investigation Division as another state-sanctioned state terrorist group of the Gestapo from Germany and, you know, the Western Europe problems we had in World War II. That's the office that you would think the Gestapo ran, not Americans run that office. I used to believe that such things could only happen in a communist bloc country or a police state. I don't believe that anymore. The thing about lining up witnesses like that and having them testify to the Gestapo evils of the IRS is that the IRS is pretty much constrained by law from defending itself. Any taxpayer can tell the Senate anything they like about the unfairness of their treatment by the IRS. Uh, but unless that taxpayer gives the IRS personal permission to discuss his or her case publicly, the IRS cannot say anything in its own defense, even to rebut false charges. So it's essentially a free play. You can say anything you want. You can't be rebutted unless you allow yourself to be rebutted. And why would you allow that? And if you liked that sort of thing the first time around in the 1990s, well, welcome to the sequel this summer. This year, it is Senator Tom Coburn saying his constituents have said they were targeted by the IRS because they gave money to the Mitt Romney campaign. Michelle Bachman says to Fox News that the IRS uses your political ideology to deny you doctor's appointments. The newspaper owner slash strip club mogul tells, says that he was targeted by the IRS, not because of anything else about him, but because he likes the Tea Party. Then there was the St. Louis TV reporter who says the IRS started hammering him after he challenged President Obama's economic policies in an interview. That reporter later got fired and then admitted that his, quote, issues with the IRS preceded that interview by several years. As a taxpayer, that guy or anybody is free to tell whatever story you like about the IRS. Unless you give the IRS permission to, the IRS by law cannot respond. It's a neat trick, right? Well, today on Capitol Hill, Congress asked the new acting IRS commissioner about an Iowa anti-abortion group, which says the IRS made them pledge not to protest Planned Parenthood. Congressman Hal Rogers. That is completely unacceptable. Do you agree with that? Well, let me start by saying I think your question uh, enters into a particular taxpayer, and, and then therefore I'm restricted by 1603 from commenting on that particular. But yes, as a broader matter, those types of question there are, are, from my vantage point, and I know I'm early in the job, inexcusable. Day one of the hearings this week in Congress about the IRS, but there will be more. The acting commissioner saying, totally I agree that that kind of thing shouldn't happen, but also I can't defend or describe or even address what this agency did or did not do in that particular case. The law says I can't. Tomorrow, that same Iowa anti-abortion group will testify before a different House committee at which the IRS will still not be able to defend itself. The committee announced the hearing as being with, quote, organizations targeted by the IRS for their personal beliefs. Just in case you were wondering what the foregone conclusion of that hearing might be, it's right there in the title. 
As a matter of governance, the IRS does have to explain itself and is having to explain itself on this policy matter of what keyword, keywords were used uh, to single out applications for tax-exempt status for getting more scrutiny. If the IRS got that wrong and there was targeting that was unfairly hinged on ideology, they will have to figure out how to make that right. Everybody agrees. But does that mean that the IRS is auditing all these Republican guys who Tom Coburn knows in Oklahoma and they're only getting audited specifically because they're Republicans and they gave money to Mitt Romney and then what do you know, audit? Who knows? Who can say? But it sounds great. And conveniently, the IRS is precluded by law from being able to refute any of it. So it sounds even better when you just keep repeating it. And that means happy subpoena summer. It's the hog wild anti-Clinton 90s all over again. And we are about to have a whole summer of quite possibly nonsense, unanswered, unproven assertions in all caps italics, three inch headlines all summer long. It is going to be a long, hot, stupid summer. We have done this all before, but at least this time we know how it all ends. Now it's time for the last word with Lawrence O'Donnell. Thanks for being with us tonight.